remember when Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson were getting married? Is he secretly mysteriously handsome? Nope. But there's something about this. All right, guy. here we go. Welcome to All My Life SPO's podcast, deep dives into lifelong discipleship. That's a new thing. We just made up a new category. (laughs) Deep dives into lifelong discipleship. I'm your host, Ryan O'Hara, along with... Emma Farina. Mrs. Farina. Still feels weird to say, you know. It's awesome. It's legal, though, so... Has the name officially been changed? We got the certificate in the mail, but that's the only thing. It's the only thing you have to do. You got to make sure the certificate happens. Just and once carry it, does, it with me everywhere. <laughs> that's great. And not only sitting here with Mrs. Farina, we're here with one of the one of the geese, one of the goose. Let's go, Mr. Flanagan. Connor Flanagan. Come on. Um, welcome to the couch. Welcome to the studio. Uh, I'm so happy to be on the couch. Mm-hmm. I'm usually in this the room on the, the other camera. side of the room, you know. Yeah. And I always look at you guys like, man, these are two of my favorite disciples. It's so fun to now mm. talk with two of my mm. favorite disciples. So honored to be here. <laughs> I uh, th- Now the name is forever changed. It, I, I'm never going to be able to unhear yeah. that. Disciples. Connor, it is great to have you here. You've been um, just a key part of of making marketing awesome again, uh, mm-hmm. or making mm-hmm. marketing even happen in SPO over the last few years. Um, what's your title right now? I should know this. Like what's uh, your title in SPO? Yeah, technically it's Director of Marketing and Creative. Director of Marketing and Creative. Yes. That feels right. But I really feel like it's the let's just do things. Like the guy who does, the guy things, who does things with <laughs> other fun people who do things. That is what it has been. And man. makes coffee on the side. That's right. You are you're a barista. Uh self self proclaimed and is it barista if you're a dude? Oh. I don't think so. I think it uh, might be. <laughs> I don't. You know, I change so. definitions of things all the time, or abbreviate disciples so. and baristos. Yeah, you heard it here first. That's right. <laughs> well, Connor, um, you do you you like to make cool things uh, wherever you go, and one of the coolest things that you make, and it's been it's been a tradition, I think, for the last few years, as a dad. Mm. Um, you might even do it maybe if you didn't have kids. I kind of feel like that might be true. Hundred percent. But here in here in the winter. There's, there's many wonderful things about living in Minnesota. And I this is the best place I've ever lived. I've lived in Indiana, Nebraska, Missouri, Arizona. Nice place to visit. The zone. Wouldn't want to live there forever. Yep. It was just always hot and always sunny. You get tired of that. And then you move to Minnesota. Greatest place on earth as far as I'm concerned. And one of the great things about Minnesota is we get a ton of snow. And because it never gets above freezing or at least for a long time, the Mm -hmm. snow sticks around and piles up. And we've had a ton of snow. And when that happens, you make this giant, like, luge run in in your backyard. That's right. And, like, the the snow, like, how high is the snow piled? Because you have to have, like, it's almost like a a slide, like a luge slide. And you build this thing. How big? It's massive. Yeah, it's pretty big. This one, this I think this is our biggest one. We did this as a kid. So I grew up on a farm in Ohio. Yeah. And we did this off our back deck and loved it. And so when we when we got the house here in Minnesota and had our first big snow, this was right. I really do think I made one before we had kids. And it, was, it actually caused some <laughs> tension in our marriage. I remember being in our couple small group. And, like, it was kind of a joke, but it was kind of serious. At one point, Katie just said, I think Connor cares about the luge more than our marriage. Everyone (laughs) in the group lost Lost it. it. Like every, myself included. And I was like, I I could get why she feels that way. Cause it takes a lot of time. And it's just like Mm -hmm. my childhood. I like to build things like to make things. Were you the kid who made, who made the igloo kind of the the igloos and kind of dug out an igloo or like the snow. Yeah. If there was snow, we were playing in it. Yeah. We were building things, Mm -hmm. ramps for our sleds, you know, on the Hills. And, uh, but yeah, so the, the, the luge this year, um, 
it's interesting because the pile kind of starts on the ground, but then it, it kind of comes up onto the deck. So with the deck, uh, it's probably eight or nine feet high. So how do you get, do you just, <laughs> do you blow See? the snow? Do you like shovel the snow up? No, here's the trick. No, tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, everyone out there the who's just on the edge For of the their seat wanting makers. to, yeah. Uh, you shovel off your roof. Oh, in your face. Yeah, both levels. So I go up to the top. It's like a win-win. Yeah. Yeah, shovel. Yeah, well, I had to do it anyways because yeah. we were we were getting ready to leave town for the weekend and we were getting some ice dams up on the roof, which is like a Minnesota resident's nightmare, right? Water yeah. starts going in the house. So I was like, I got to clear those off, but I got to get the snow off to do that. So I shoveled. We had like a foot of snow on the roof on both levels. And so I shoveled the top down to the roof of the deck and then I went down to that one and shoveled all that off. And that was just like... That was just perfect. So you just build a massive pile. And it has to be bigger than you think because you have to kind of carve the luge into it. So this year, we like I built steps into the back of it so our kids could just go out there and climb up it. In past years, I've had to like lift them up on the pile and they slide down. And this year, it's totally uh, uh, available to anyone who can walk (laughs) or crawl. So are you up on your deck and roof, just you and your shovel? Yeah. You're not like doing a roof rake. No, I'm shoveling. Thing. There's not a flake of snow left. How dangerous there. is that? So, did you ask a different question? Mm-hmm. What was that? I didn't hear that. Was it, were we going to move on? No, I want to know how dangerous that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's probably it's probably dangerous. I'm I'm good about it. Like I don't go near the edges. Do you have like crampons. Do you know what those are on your? I sh- do. I don't have any of those. Okay. Um, like hooked in. Yeah. No, I I stay, roofers use those. Yeah, and Which it's I mean should. it's icy, and so I I stay away from the edges. I don't I don't even try to mess around with that. Um, the deck roof's a lot lower, so that's easier to, I, you know, yeah, I could jump off the deck roof and be on the ground fine. My my goal is to, at some point, run off, like sled off the deck roof and drop into the luge. I uh. think I'm close this year. <laughs> I built the luge, then we caught a little bit of a warm spell, so the, the pile shrinked a little bit. But I think if I could get it back up another six inches, I... That's it? It means... It's only six. I mean, let's go. Like, oh, it's I feel cool. like yeah, you can. Everybody off. brings snow if, to Connor's If you stand house. on the loose, you on the top of the loose, you can like sit on the roof of the deck. Wow. Yeah. So it's a mat. It's it's awesome. It looks great. Um, Connor's a great mm-hmm. follow on Instagram at Connor Flanagan Music, and you can check check, check out, out the loose. I don't highlights. know if you've you've saved any stories of of that. If people want to check uh, it but out, but we're out there like every night, and there will be content soon of the hosts of this podcast. Taking a luge run at some point. We got to get you guys over. Emma. Both of us. Yeah. For the promo. For the promo. Pro yeah. Mo. <laughs> um, that would be fun. We should do that. We should do that. So um, you, you and I have sat down and talked about creative things in other other settings, but just to bring the, the world um, with this podcast into your a bit of your creative calling, you're a musician. I am. And there was a point in time where maybe it was just a hobby. Like I could see you like, you know, in college or another, another places with a guitar Mm -hmm. and maybe leading worship. And I don't know if that would be considered a hobby, but there was a point at which you're this call to be a musician, this call to be a creative went from hobby to calling. Huh? What uh, is that? Is that one? Is that true? Yeah. And what does that look like? And how? Because this is not what you're doing day in and day out. You're here with SPO, right? Um, but outside of SPO, this is this, this sort of burning mission that you have in your life, and and we want to hear about that. Like, what's that transition like from hobby, something you're pursuing? to get, get gaining ground and momentum that God's really calling me to pour into this. And I want to see where it goes. Yeah. I, uh, that's a great question. I, it's funny. I don't even know if I like the word hobby, um, period or relative to this. Well, question? definitely relative to this question, but I, as you're saying that I'm trying to process like, what's the purpose of a hobby, you yeah. know? And if it like, and maybe this is just my perspective. Like we only have so much time and we only have so many resources. And so I'm, I'm like, well, how are we, we got to figure out how to utilize all of ourselves for what God wants us to do. And so I'm kind of like, if your hobby taps into something that God has for you, then it's so much more than a hobby. 
right? And I'm kind of like, if it doesn't, then it might be a waste of time, you know? And that's a really extreme approach. But as a father and as someone who has a lot of ideas and is trying to do a lot of different things and has a big vision for my life and my family's life, that's kind of where my heart's at. Is like, if we're not constantly working and tapping into our gifts and exposing them to all of what God has for them, then what are we doing? You know, I, as silly as it sounds, I love coffee. You could say coffee is a hobby. It's like, no, it's a part of my life. Like, it's how I love people. It really yeah. is, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. if I could fit an espresso machine in my back pocket, I would. I've tried. It doesn't fit, you know? <laughs> like, um, so I don't know. That that might be, like, an extreme take on hobby. But I think for music, uh, there was, uh, I don't know, as I went through um, probably towards the end of college when I've shared my first cut, started, started playing my songs live for people that I was writing, um, and people started to sing them too, as silly as it sounds. And they started to respond to them. And like, you could see like when your gift brings joy to somebody else, mm-hmm. it's like, it's just, it, it rocks your world. You're like, Whoa, you know, like this, something I created, co-created with the Lord, just, just moved somebody to a place of joy. And you're like, I want to do that again. Mm-hmm. I want to do that again. And then you start seeing yeah. the fruits of your labor and, uh, and so you want to keep, you just want to keep kind of keep going. And then it goes from something you're just doing on the side. Like I'm poor. Then the practicals come in, right? You start pouring more time and more money. And, and then you feel like, wait, God, this, you do have something in this for me. You know, it just, I want to hear a little bit more on that, but it, it makes me think there's a lot of, of creative arts out there and may, maybe um, someone reading a book that someone writes is, is close to it, but like I, I give talks. That's one of the ways that God works through me creatively. But no one gives, I mean, unless it's like plagiarism, that wouldn't be so good. But like no one gives my talks, you know. But <laughs> but people might sing your songs. Yeah. Um, it just hit me. I wonder what that, what would that, you're even tapping into it a little bit. What would that, what did that feel like when something that you wrote, something that you created, others participate in that? What, what was that like? Yeah. Uh, so we, uh, we just had a worship leaders retreat weekend yeah. here at SPO called cultivate 40 worship leaders from around the country came in. You guys were there, you helped with it. Mm-hmm. And I gave a talk on creativity and music and I went into the chapel. Sorry, this is a roundabout answer, but I mm-hmm. think it's cool. I went into the chapel right before the talk saying, God, is there, I feel like there's a missing piece to this talk. What do you want me to tell these musicians? And these are like, I felt like in some ways my people, like I get, you know, 30 minutes to talk about whatever I want with mu- musicians. Yeah. And, um, he was like, you need to show them the video of your first performance ever. Like the Lord was saying that. To yeah. You. yeah. And I just laughed. I was like, what? You know, it's like from 2009, I had to, di- I knew it was on Facebook, but I had to dig to find it. Oh, man. And, uh, and I did. And, and, and I didn't really know why. Like, I just thought like, oh, just like humility. I was like, oh, I'm going to go show this, like, you know, talk about even just what I was wearing was (laughs) humiliating in that video. Uh, But God just spoke something so powerfully to me in that of like, because there were musicians coming from all over, all different skill levels, all different uh, talent levels. And beginnings are hard, Mm -hmm. especially in today's day and age. Like if you're going to start something, it's really hard because there's somebody you have access to that has already finished the thing you're trying to start. And so you just keep looking at them like, well, I'll never be where they're at. Mm -hmm. So I can't start. And, uh, I showed the video to be like, beginnings are awesome because that video is a timestamp of God rocking my world. The first time I played one of my songs for people and then in the video, you see it. So this is the answer to your question. And I didn't realize it till I watched it uh, with, with the musicians. You see the moment everyone in the room starts singing the chorus and I just have this goofy smile come across my face. Seriously. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, like it brought me back. I was like, that was the moment. Like God spoke something so powerfully as I listened mm-hmm. to all these people sing the chorus of this song and um, a song you wrote. Yeah. A mm-hmm. song that I wrote and it's, it's such a raw, beautiful moment. And it was a cool like teaching moment to be like, guys, beginnings are the best part. Like it's where God is. He is cooking, right? He is cooking in mm-hmm. your kitchen, getting all the ingredients ready and like getting you primed and ready to make the thing, the, the, the recipe, so to speak. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool, feeling when you can make something that resonates with somebody else's experience to the point where they want to talk about it too. Mm-hmm. So, or share it. Yeah. And I know something that you had mentioned too, when you were showing us that video was just like how, like it, it wasn't done alone. Like you had mm. support. Yeah. 
from a particular person, but like this journey is like something that like other people have like been along. Yeah. Like with you. Yeah. I had a, I had a, uh, a older brother, a household brother of mine at Franciscan Josh who, uh, like believed in me when he really shouldn't have. I was a punk. I probably didn't even pay enough attention <laughs> to him because we couldn't have been more different in college, but he just loved on me and really believed in me. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I lost the bet to him that made me perf- perform in this talent show and share mm-hmm. this song. So uh, yeah, you need people around you for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know something else that you're super passionate about is just like that um, everybody is creative in their own mm-hmm. way and that everyone has this like creative call, like, God is creator. And so we are called to create, um, in that way as well. Um, so yeah, everyone has like different creatives. I know you said, Ryan, you giving talks is like a very way that you're creative. Um, yeah, graphic design is like something that I do, but, um, not everyone has like necessarily like such like obvious creative gifts. Mm -hmm. So if somebody came up to you and was like, I am not creative, how would you convince them otherwise? Before I smack them or after? <laughs> no. um, I think uh, we just don't give ourselves the chance, mm-hmm. right? Like I, um, building a luge in your backyard with snow is creative and that doesn't really take art. Like you don't need to know how to mm-hmm. pull in, you know, different tools and in design or, you know, you don't have to know the ins and outs of podcasting. Like you just have to have a shovel mm-hmm. and you have to be able to see the thing in your mind that you want to make. And, um, I just think because of what I was saying with beginnings being hard, we all, anything you want to literally anything you want to do right now in the world has already been done mm-hmm. in some way, shape or form. Now it hasn't because you haven't done it right. We, we are created unique and individual. And so that's, that's kind of one of my big things is like, you're actually depriving the world of something if you don't do the thing, because no one else can actually do what you can do in the way you can do it. Um, that's why we have thousands and thousands of podcasts because everyone has a unique voice and a unique story to tell. Mm-hmm. And same with musicians. That's why you're always there's that's, that's why there's hope to, for new musicians to even have a career because you have a new story to tell, even though you may be using similar sounds and similar lyrics. Um, so I think most people are just paralyzed. I think everybody, I know everybody has a burning desire on their heart. Mm-hmm. I want to be a chef. I want to be an artist. Uh, I, I want to be someone who designs the infrastructures of cities because I think I could do it way more efficiently. Well, how do you even start that? Mm-hmm. You know, you just go on Instagram and be like, well, someone's doing all those things already. Why me? Mm-hmm. So uh, I would probably just go in on that more and more. Like there's something in there. Like what's just the burning thing on your heart? And uh, let's just talk about it because that's probably at the heart of where you're creative. Yeah. I think just to give an example of my life, like my first internship in design, I remember sitting down. I was, it was, I just finished my freshman year of college and I forgot how to make a box in Illustrator. <laughs> and like, to, I don't know, like, see, like now, like, were there people w- watching you, like, will you please make a box, Emma? And I think, well, I, don't, I honestly don't even remember what it was. Maybe I was like making a sign or something, but I just remember I was like so embarrassed. I just like totally blanked on how to make a box. That reminds me when I was um, trying, I was trying to pray a Hail Mary publicly. Oh, and the hardest. It. Oh, why? <laughs> it is why so does that hard. happen? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Like, uh, that's the worst. I knew the, yeah. I knew how to pray the Hail Mary. You know how mm-hmm. to make a box, but mm-hmm. then you blank. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, even like seeing how far since then, that like, you know, I've come and um, yeah, that's been like a gift working with you for the past like five years. It's just been the encouragement you've given me. And I know in this past year, there have just been conversations about like, how do we encourage the people in the office, like here nationally, you know, there's people of all, you know, finance and, um, yeah, we have marketing and MPD and recruiting, like just all these different departments and like, how can each department actually showcase like their mm-hmm. creativity? Um, so yeah, I mean, I know that's like huge in SPO, but also like outside of SPO, like what are ways that you are encouraging people and like really trying to build them up in their creativities? Can I ask you a question first? Sure. Uh, well, just cause you brought it up, like I th- it actually is really interesting to me. Where do you think from the time we started working together? I mean, mm-hmm. if you were to look at what you were designing, mm-hmm. like day one of SPO to now it's insane. Yeah. Like it's insane. What? So would you say, Hey, are you more creative now than you were then? Do you think you are? I think so. Yeah. And why? Um, I honest, I mean, honestly, I think it is like the positive affirmation and like the opportunity just like the, the multitude of opportunities, but then I think also just the freedom to explore those new avenues and like the freedom to fail in those new avenues. 
was there a, something that shifted in you in that process? Like, were you, I know something shifted in you. Yeah. I'm wondering if you were ever recognized like, oh, because I think now you would say like, yeah, I'm creative. Yeah. I don't think you would have said that. Probably not. Would. Yeah. <laughs> and, even, and, and yet you were even in something that was so obviously creative. Like a creative role. But it mm-hmm. didn't. That's interesting. It didn't dawn on you maybe in that same yeah. way. Really, you wouldn't you would mm-hmm. say you wouldn't have thought of yourself that way some years back? I think it probably like a buy in. Like mm-hmm. when I was like, oh, like what what I do matter. Like does like or it matters for like the mission. Mm-hmm. I think you know, like, yeah, this could have been just like a job or something, like a day to day. But I think it's or that just like f- you have functional skill. Yeah, yeah. You, like I know how to make these put designs. It into the sense of being creative or exercising creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What's and I think like that, like, what is it for? Like, why am I doing this? And for, for me, for this mission, it's like, so others can like come to know Christ, like through the work that I'm doing. Like there is like a, a deeper purpose to it. It's similar to the song thing, right? Once you see people respond to the thing, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, in some ways it's like, I'm legit. Yeah. Right? Like it's like, oh, what I do, Matt. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, to answer your question, what do I do? Um, I just try to get people together. Like I just mm-hmm. love being with people. And I think what we don't do as creatives enough is collaborate. And um, we isolate ourselves because we, we fall into competitiveness and comparison. And we don't feel like for some reason there's enough work for all of us to go around, which is insane. <laughs> and especially if you're a Christian creative, like it's antithetical to who God is, right? He never created anything alone. He's Trinitarian. And so for us to think that we shouldn't be like, creating together is insane. So for me, it's like, we have our team, right? We have our Monday morning meetings as a team, which are my, Mm -hmm. my favorite part of the week, uh, where we, you know, we've been reading different books and, and we go in on creativity and inspire each other every Monday. I have different musical outlets of people. We have this, uh, record label music, a creative music company called Dayton Avenue that, uh, we have culture nights where we just get creative musicians. We actually just get creatives in a room and we pray together and we just say, let's just pray for creativity. Literally. Um, And then I just like, uh, I just tried to give people opportunity. Like you said, like once you had opportunity, that's when it started to come to life. And I Mm -hmm. think we're, we got to be less afraid of failure and give more people opportunity. And I feel like I try to do those two things anywhere, anywhere, kids, marriage, work, music. So. Mm -hmm. Love it. Who has made, who, who's poured into you? That's made a huge difference like wow. what you you pour into others <laughs> yeah. yeah but who, who got that started in you oh man that's a, a, that's a really good question uh we got time dude i i mean there's a, there's different people in different ways i think um like at a very young age my parents were the ones who exposed me uh to music right and went out of their way quite literally. And especially being a parent now, I have so, so much more of an appreciation for like what they did to get me in front of live Christian music and live like, Christian, live music, Christian yeah. music. I'm like, Oh my gosh, with little kids, would I ever go camping for five days in a field to go watch a bunch of concerts <laughs> in the summer? And I'm like, ah, I don't know if I could muster that up right now. You know, they did yeah. that. They did that every mm-hmm. summer. We do five days live fest in Ohio thunderstorms, rain, mud, you know, like you're just, and you're surrounded by other, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of other people camping in this huge field. And you go to, you know, there's just concerts all day long. And, um, so that, that was, you know, my parents had a huge, huge role in that very early on. And then, um, my buddy Josh specifically, who was the one who was my big brother in household in college and, uh, discipled me was the first person who really discipled me first off. But then, um, just saw the gift in me and went out of his way to, to invest in it and pour into it. And he wasn't musical at all. He was just like, I just, I just believe in what makes you come alive, Connor. Mm -hmm. Um, I think then there's been, you know, working in Nashville, there's a handful of people down there that, you know, once you kind of make it to that town and you start working with people, even that is just a level of encouragement. Like, Oh, they want to work with me. You know, they don't have to say anything. It's just like, oh, I'm allowed in the room and uh, they, they value me being in the room and you're just encouraged by like their time because these people are busy and they're professionals. And so I've made a lot of relationships down there that I've been so, so encouraged by. Um, and then my wife, you know, she is she is uh, hands down um, just regularly. I mean, through the day in and day out 
is just encouragement of like setting our life up in a way where I can work full time and pursue music full time and, and every other hundred of creative ideas that come, come <laughs> out of the woodwork, like a luge in the backyard. Um, but then the moments where it's hard and it's tough and, and she's just like the constant reminder of like why we're in this and what God's trying to do with our family. Um, and my sister, I can't, Hannah, my sister Hannah has been like a crazy loud voice for me because she's, she was out with me in college. And so she's filmed some of my shows. She's kind of seen this from the ground level. And so she's been a really, really big encourager of it all too. You know, short, short of uh, the example of kind of some of the professionals in the industry in Nashville, all of those are examples of people right next to you in life. And it makes me think like, do, are we close to people who will cheer us on, who will encourage us, who will call us higher and to more? And I, 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 I sort of shudder to think, you know, we're, that your parents wouldn't have taken you to those festivals or Josh in household wouldn't have spoken up or that Katie might not incur, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm sure that, that, that feels like an irreplaceable, like you couldn't imagine your life with, and it's not just like what you do. It's actually become more of, of who God has created you to be. It's like, yeah. there's an identity there, mm-hmm. not in an unhelpful way, but as God's son and participating and kind of co-creating uh, in God's image. Yeah. It's right next to you yeah. Yeah. each step of the way. And there's, I mean, that list could go on. There's sure. so many people that, um, but it's interesting. It's funny. It's, it's one of the things now that I desire the most, which is what someone to pour into me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think being the one who's kind of on top, so to speak, uh, in a lot of the spaces that I'm in, like I regularly, I mean, people be like, what's the next, what do you need? What are you looking at in your career and stuff? I'm like, I, I would love a legit creative mentor, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so it's constant like give and take there. So I love it. Yeah. Um, so this podcast, all my life, uh, there's kind of this phrase that gets thrown around in SPO. It's been a, a really powerful one that that we would live all of our life for the rest of our life uh, for Jesus. Where 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 Jesus meets Connor, like there's an intersection there, uh, and there's a collision of of the Lord Jesus and Connor Flanagan. I know that that collision has, has, has um, made a huge impact in your life, Mm -hmm. but I don't want to go to, to that moment. I want to see now, like where, where is that collision leveraged the most in your life where, where he's calling you deeper to trust him, to be in relationship with him, to follow him, to believe him, to take risks for him. Where, where is that place right now? Oh my gosh. Um, (laughs) That place is, I, I'm coming to a, a much more, a much more clear understanding of what it means to trust God. And, like kind of putting like I, I just think specifically creatives because the creative career path is so risky. Nothing's guaranteed, really. You know, if you want to be an entrepreneur in that space and it's not always seen as legit, when it's, which is funny because when you look at what drives culture and it's entertainment, it's creativity, mm-hmm. it's music, it's movies, it's they are the most legit things in our world. Yet when you're starting, it seems so illegitimate, like you'll never make money. And there's a lot of insecurity and fear there. And um for me, I think God has just been speaking like, hey, put your money where your mouth is. And like, I think that's the message to all creators who follow the Lord is like, do you trust God as provider and sustainer of all things? And if you do, then what are you, like, why aren't you pouring into these gifts more? You know, like uh, we get too caught up in, in money and we get too caught up in attention and metrics and all of this stuff and following trends and uh I, I really do think that, uh, and I've even noticed this in myself, we just le- lose sight of the creator. We lose sight of the creator in the midst of us creating. And I don't think I've lost sight of the creator, but I don't rest enough. I definitely don't rest enough. And I'm finding a new, because I had to give this talk, I've been yeah. finding this new conviction about rest. It's part of the creative process. What we was the it. talk? 
uh, I gave that talk to the worship leaders about about uh, creativity and music and your identity as a creative and it's inherent to who you are. And I said, built into the creative process is rest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Six days of, yeah. of intense creation and then yeah. you rest. And I don't do that well. I, I feel like, ah, but God, I need that seventh day. I could get so much more done. Mm. You know, Chick-fil-A actually makes more money because they're closed on Sunday. <laughs> I could go on and on about that, but I'm like fascinated by that concept. But they make yeah. more money because of the demand, the, it, the, you know, and it's a long-term play for them. And I think it's the same thing with the Lord. Like God can do, do more him? with us if we mm-hmm. trust him with our rest is an act of trust. It's not just to sleep. Rest is truly saying, God, I believe that you can do more with my rest than I can with that time myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is where God is like kind of rocking my world right now. Yeah. Love that. So I, I know that like, I feel like there's a lot of advice that has been given <laughs> throughout the podcast and just a lot of encouragement. Um, but I think if, if there was just like one like action item, like one thing to like encourage people of all creative levels, like what would that be? Um, I would say, I might give two things, two quick things. Uh, one would be like today, when you hear this podcast today, find someone that you can look at them and say, I believe in you. Mm-hmm. Because we're all, we all desire to be believed in, mm-hmm. in our fatherhood, in our vocations, in our jobs, in what we post in the picture of the meal we posted online today, you know, like whatever. I mean, honestly, why do we share things? Cause we want people to believe in who we are. And let's just note real quick. I don't want to interrupt that train of thought, but there are people out there who do believe in others, but they haven't named it. Right. So you you're actually, it. there are people you're thinking of like literally name it. Like I looked at a worship leader this weekend before they left the, and I just looked him in the face and I said, Hey, I believe in you. And, and it's not because you write great songs. It's because I just, I just believe in what God is doing in your life mm-hmm. and I want to help. And, uh, because think if, if I went through my life and, and never had, like, I would not be the person I am if I can't tell stories about, yeah, people did that to me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you don't have to, like Josh wasn't a musician, but he believed in me. Yeah. So that would be one. I would just say, Hey, go believe in somebody today and tell them don't, te- maybe texting is to break the ice, but go tell them, call them, look at their face. Um, and then I would say for you as a creative, if you're listening to this, uh, I would say do something. Like, mm-hmm. like cars make don't something. Car, make something. Cars don't drive unless you, you step on the gas pedal. Like, yeah. make something. Like, and, and really enjoy the beginning because that's where God is working the most. Mm-hmm. Amen. So. Mm-hmm. Well, to wrap up, we got some hot seat Let's questions go. for you. You ready? Come on. Um, ideal car. Ideal car. Uh, I would love a Jeep of some kind, a bigger Jeep. Snorkeling or scuba diving? Oh, come diving. on, you guys. <laughs> uh, I scuba for sure because I have a troubled past with snorkeling. Mm. Hmm, I want to talk about that. That's, so another, <laughs> that's another episode. <laughs> What's a creative outlet that you have that people don't know about you? I love to build things. We know that. Okay. Uh, like what? Just say, say what? I, I built my kitchen table. Yeah, that's money. Yeah. yeah. I love to draw too. I actually started what? as an artist. I used to draw before I did music. Did not know that. Yeah. I have a cool picture of uh, Alan Iverson that I drew, but I never was good at faces. So Do all you have of it? My, I have it still, but all of my old drawings. In the show notes. Don't, office don't, decorations. Don't have faces because I never could fin- figure out how to do that's faces. Money. It's an artistic choice. Um, and what is your favorite smell? This is going to freak people out. Let's go. I love the smell of gasoline and cigarettes. Okay, me let me too. just give you let me just <laughs> no, give you some context, I, yeah. right? I'm <laughs> like, driving home from a show. I'm driving home from a show. It's like 3:30 in the morning cuz we're driving through the night and you roll up to a gas station and you have to fill up the car. So you're kind of living the dream and you there's the smell of gasoline and then someone's over there smoking a cigarette and you're like I'm in a movie right Life now. Is good. <laughs> yeah, you know. Where's James Dean? <laughs> <laughs> Connor, it's an Awesome uh, privilege to have you not only um, so grateful for this conversation, mm-hmm. but really you've been the the engine that sort of moves so much creativity mm-hmm. in SPO and even has shown us in SPO what's possible and mm-hmm. you've expanded uh, the boundaries and um, just so grateful, such a joy to, to work with you, to know you, to be a brother and a friend, uh, but to be a co laborer creator with you 
So thank you so much for pouring into all of us and even making something like this possible. Oh man, it's so fun. This the team here at SPO is next level. Bonnie, Kelsey, Ryan, Emma. Uh yeah, I'm excited to see all we can do for the kingdom with this squad. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. So this has been all my life. SPO's podcast deep dives into lifelong discipleship. Let's go. (laughs) Deep dives into lifelong discipleship. And check us out on YouTube. This is where we're at. Mm -hmm. And anywhere you can find podcasts, we're going to be. See you next time.